In this video, I'm looking at PAG 10, Rates of Reaction, Initial Rates. So the skills covered by the PAG include the measurement of the rate of reaction by an initial rate method, the use of appropriate software to process data, and the ability to identify and control variables. Now the second one there, I'm not going to include that in the video because these are meant to help towards the exam style questions on the written papers and I don't really think they're going to test your knowledge of software in a written exam. So before we look at the task, just some information about the experiment that it's based around. And then I've actually got a little video of this experiment that I did at college. So peroxidisulfate, six ions, S2O8 minus and iodide ions react together to form sulfate ions and iodine. So we've got that first equation there and you can see I2 is one of the products. Now if you've also got present in the same beaker or test tube, you've got some thiosulfate ions, they can then react with the iodine produced and turn it back into iodide. So that's the second equation. Now imagine when all of the thiosulfate has been used up, any I2 left over can react with starch if you've got it in the beaker and then you would get a blue black colour produced. So imagine that that reaction is thought to be first order with respect to I minus. We're going to be planning an experiment to show that. But first of all I just want to show you this quick video about what this looks like. So the reactants have been placed in the beaker and when all of the thiosulfate is used up, there you can see the starch indicator goes blue-black because of the iodine. So here's the task using the chemicals listed below and appropriate apparatus. We've got to plan an experiment to find the order of this reaction with respect to I-. And in our answer, we have to quote suitable volumes of solutions for the experiment and explain how these results could be used to show that the reaction is actually first order with respect to the I minus. So if you want to pause the video, have a go at that and then play on when you're ready to hear the answer. So here's my procedure and just a very quick summary of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to vary the concentration of the I minus solution by diluting it with water but we're going to keep the concentrations of everything else the same. So there's that skill being tested, the ability to identify and control variables. I'm going to keep my total volume of reaction mixture at 10 cubic centimetres, and I'm carrying out the experiment in test tubes. So first thing I'm going to do using burettes for accuracy, measuring out 5 cubic centimetres of Ki solution, 2 cm cubed of sodium thiosulfate solution and 1 cm cubed of starch indicator solution. And that's all going to go in the same test tube. The reaction won't start until the other chemical, the peroxidized sulfate ions, are present. So into a separate test tube, I'm measuring out 2 cm cubed of the potassium peroxidized sulfate solution. So just a quick look at the total volumes there. In this test tube here, we've got 5, 2, and 1, so that's 8 cm cubed, and we've got 2 cm cubed in the other test tube. So there's my total volume of 10. And then when we're ready, we're going to add the 2 cm cubed solution to the other test tube and immediately start timing. And using that stopwatch or timer, we're recording the time for the blue-black colour to appear, as you saw in that little video. We're then going to repeat that procedure, but instead of using 5 cm cubed of just Ki, we're going to use 4 and 1 water. So total volume of that is still 5, but we're starting to dilute it down a little bit with water. Obviously everything else is the same, and we'll time how long that takes to go blue-black. And then we're going to do that Again, but for these ratios of Ki solution to water, so 3 to 2, 2 to 3, and 1 to 4. 
Obviously, if you've got time, you would repeat all of that and take an average of the time for each experiment. And you'd record your results in something like this. So in the first test tube, we've got all of these solutions. And in the second test tube, we've just got this single solution here. And there's the space in the table for time. And again, if you had enough time, you'd have a couple of time um, columns and then an average time column. So if we have a look at the analysis of results now, so the first thing we need to do is calculate the concentration of the I- minus for each experiment. So I've done that for the first one, and it's the same method for all the rest. So the moles of I- minus is concentration times volume. Remember we use 5 cubic centimetres, so there's that many moles, and that's in 10 cubic centimetres. So the concentration is moles divided by volume, so it's 0 0.5 for experiment. One. So the other concentrations are going to be those. We're going to use the 1 over time method to express the initial rate. And then we'd need to plot a graph of the initial rate on the y-axis against the concentration of I- minus on the x-axis. So if it was first order with respect to the I- minus concentration, we should see a straight line graph through the origin. So I've actually done this experiment, I just did it at once, I didn't do any repeats, and you can see there in the last two columns my times, and then my one over time, my initial rate. So I've plotted the graph, and it looks like that, and you can see very clearly that we have got a straight line graph through the origin, showing that the reaction is indeed first order with respect to the I minus ion concentration.